I bet you've heard of these before. Today, I find out if they're worth the hype. Hey, I'm Ben Arthur. This is Ben's Watch Club, the home of affordable watches. Today, I'll be reviewing my first ever Seiko 5 wristwatch. This one actually isn't new, but I've had it for a few months and I thought it was finally time to get it on the channel. Subscribe if you wanna see more content just like this in the future. Now let's get into the video. Seiko is a brand with over a century of history. Too much to really dive into in this video, but there is one thing worth mentioning. When I talk to people about watches, both online and in person, there's still something that shocks me. Loads of people, especially those that aren't watchaholics, really think that this brand is completely out of their price range. I guess when you walk past high street watch dealers and then look at the types of Seikos that they typically have in stock, it's understandable. I often see loads of pieces retailing for several hundreds of pounds, in a lot of cases way, way more expensive than they should be, so I can see how you could get that impression. In the early 1960s though, Seiko created the Seiko 5 sub-brand to bring reasonable quality and an automatic movement to the masses. The number five on the dial refers to five specific attributes, which the official Seiko website currently lists as an automatic winding movement, day date displayed in a single window, water resistance, a recessed crown at the four o'clock position, and a durable case and bracelet. Realistically though, there are loads and loads of these available and plenty of them stray from that framework. However, the message is clear. These watches offer a solid baseline and an entry level point into Seiko at a low price. Most people will easily be able to afford one of these. Whilst their newest upcoming Seiko 5 line is controversially priced at closer to 300 pounds, the vast majority can still be had for well below 150 with many models under the 100 pound mark, which as I'll speak about later is really good value. Today I'll be taking a look at this Seiko SNK793, which I picked up what must have been about six months ago for about £95. There is a load of models in this series, so I'll link some of them in the video description. As with most Seiko 5 models, this comes on a stainless steel bracelet. This one is only constructed of folded links and it has hollow end links. It is done to a higher standard than some other folded link bracelets that I've seen, but really, it's nothing special. It feels quite light, cheap, and tinny overall. You'll notice this rattling noise, which really isn't pleasant. It's not a nice rattling sound, this one. Um, it's definitely a bad one. But I guess you don't notice it so much when it's on with this one. Overall, these watches are renowned for having pretty shitty bands whilst putting the money into the rest of the watch, which overall, I'm kind of okay with. For comparison, I'd say the one that you get with the Invicta Pro Diver by standard, that one is slightly better quality than this. That one has solid links and feels far more substantial overall. The clasp does have three micro adjustments, which is nice, but again, is an area where corners have been cut. You may want to switch this out for an alternative strap at some point. This watch looks pretty good on a variety of different options. The case does have a higher level of finishing. This is also constructed of stainless steel and comes in at 38 millimeters in diameter and around 11 millimeters in depth, supporting 22 millimeter straps. This one features a high shine bezel and rear with brushed steel flanks. Overall, the tightly contoured lugs give this case a very circular shape, which some might like and others might not. Personally, after having spent some time with this watch, I think I probably prefer the shape of some of the other Seiko 5 watches with the more traditional sides. Though, I think it was worth giving this a try. Maybe you'll prefer this one. Nevertheless, I love the proportions of this piece. It's just really satisfying wearing something that's 38 millimeters. This size sits well on my wrist, and I think it looks awesome. So many watches these days are 42 millimeters or over, which is just too big for me, and I think it's quite big for most guys. It's obviously some sort of fashion trend, so the great thing with Seiko 5 is you can still get watches that fit. There's a huge variety of models and styles to pick from, so really, there's one for every wrist size. This is the sweet spot for me, and I like the fact it's also relatively slim, even though it's got an automatic movement inside, which we'll talk about soon. You've got that recessed crown at the four o'clock position too. While the grip is actually surprisingly good, I still find it hard to turn. It's tricky to make adjustments just because it's quite small, 
And the recession, while it looks nicer, it does conceal part of the crown, meaning that you can't get a full grip on it at all times. However, when you tuck it in, it does look nice and neat, almost looks symmetrical, very slick. Covering the dial is a simple piece of mineral crystal, which is really the standard type used in these low cost watches. This material isn't the best and is prone to some scratches. It's not gonna be as good as something like sapphire glass, which you'd expect to pay a little bit more for, but it will provide some limited protection over something like acrylic glass. It's a shame there's no sapphire here, but really at this price point, you can't expect that. There's also a second piece as part of the exhibition case back, allowing you to see straight through to the movement within. The face is what I would describe as your classic everyday Seiko. Relatively chunky hour markers, baton hands and a day window with a small silver outline. I think it's maybe slightly towards the dressier side, but overall looks wise, it can be quite versatile. The dial on this model is a very dark navy and does have somewhat of a sunburst effect when looked at at specific angles. In person though, it is a little bit darker than the online images would suggest and it takes a real specific angle to be able to see the sunburst. As a result, it is a little bit dim for my taste. I prefer it if it was a little bit lighter, but overall, I think the watch does look more expensive than the price tag would suggest. On reflection, I'd also like it if this particular color variant had a darker date window. I think that the white stands out slightly against the darker background, and I think it slightly cheapens the appearance of the watch. So it's not my favorite. I think that the black variant to this does look slightly better. That one has the black day window too, which goes a little bit better, I think. Though obviously it kind of lacks any real color. These Seiko 5s are pretty popular because you can get a half decent Seiko movement for a really low price. Inside this one, you'll find a caliber 7S26C movement. This has no hacking or hand winding, but I doubt many people considering this watch will be bothered by that. Really, this is a reliable lower end movement, which I think is a great gateway into mechanical watches especially given the fact that you can see straight through the back into the movement. It gives a bit of wonder, I think, if you're not familiar with them. You really can't complain in that regard for under 100 pounds. You can get automatic movements elsewhere for slightly cheaper, but there really aren't very many options. You'd mainly have to just look at these random Chinese brands, many of which don't have the same sort of quality control or definitely not the same prestige as a brand like Seiko. This is why many watch enthusiasts tend to recommend these as the best first option. I do like this watch. It's not my absolute favorite, as you can probably tell from my tone of voice. You do get a lot of watch for your money with some great killer features. I just think I might prefer another design in the future instead of this one. For me, this one definitely plays it a little bit safe. I could see this watch being a fantastic first choice though for someone who is new to mechanical watches. And because of the low cost, this could be a really good gift option for a guy. This design is quite versatile and I could see suiting both casual and more formal environments quite well. That could potentially save you the money spending on two separate watches. Furthermore, you do tap into some of that brand prestige that's associated with Seiko. Whilst it's no Rolex, there is something cool about wearing a watch from a heritage brand like Seiko who have made significant contributions to watchmaking. It's much better than spending a similar amount of money on a terrible watch from a random high street fashion shop. One benefit is the resale value. Unlike with obscure fashion brands, you'll generally be able to get a fair chunk of your money back if you wanted to sell one of these. This is great if this watch fell out of favor or if you changed your mind and wanted to rustle up your collection a little bit. If you're after budget watches, I definitely have a scout of these to see if there's one that tickles your fancy. I'll link them below. Now it's time for the wall of watches. It makes a return. In the last review, you voted on the Casio F91W, which I reviewed a while back on my other channel. Many of you loved it. Some of you thought that it looked pretty boring, which I can kind of understand. As such, your votes place this one somewhere towards the lower end of cool. We're getting a bit of a bunch up in that area of the board, aren't we? Nevertheless, where are we placing this Seiko 5? Is this watch... Low quality Chinese garbage. Uncool, cool, or ice cold? Have your vote in the iCard somewhere above me right now. And you can also get a second vote in the comment section. Let me know your thoughts on this watch below. I also want to hear your experiences if you've had any good times with other Seiko 5 watches. I'd like to know which ones they were as well. I'm interested. Subscribe for more affordable wristwatch videos. And I'll see you in the next one.